Hello and welcome to another CG tip. With Maya 2020, Autodesk gave us a whole suite of new rigging attributes and nodes to help make our rigs more economical and powerful. One of these is the offset parent matrix attribute, which in short, offers another level on top of the main transforms, meaning we can finally remove the need for all the offset groups that bloat our rigs. There is obviously so much more to them, but in this video we will go over the basics of how to use them on a single joint and also a joint chain. So here we have a basic joint chain and a series of FK controls and a main root control. So essentially this is how rigs are set up. The FK controls are parented to each other, meaning we can quickly pose them like this. OK, let's look at the first joint and control. And to begin, we will quickly look at how things are currently done with rigs. When rigging joints, it's good practice to make sure the controls also match the joint's orientations. This is to eliminate any offsets which may be added when using constraints and other connections. The problem is, moving the controls to match the joints gives us these transform values. And we need the controls in the rig to be zeroed out. Now we could just use the freeze transformations tool. So that's frozen now. And as you can see, the transforms are all nice and clean. The problem is, the controls orientation no longer matches the joint. It's more obvious if we select these controls down here. You can see the orientation is now flat and doesn't follow the joint. So we can't do that. Let's undo this. What we need to do is maintain the orientation, but pass the transforms to something else. And we can do this with a group. So press Ctrl and G to create a group and match its transforms so it's in the same place in orientation as the first joint. OK, the group is here now. Next, parent the control to the group. You see, the control's transforms are now zero. This is because they've been passed onto the parent group. The control's transforms are relative to its parent, so because it's in the same place, they're all zero. So we can use these offset groups to hold the position and rotation information, leaving the controls clear and in the correct orientation. Let's update the rest of the controls now. So create a series of empty groups and match their position to the controls or the joints. Now add these into the hierarchy so the controls are beneath each. You see, the controls are all zero now with the offset from their parents now sitting on the offset groups. Let's rename these. So that's the controls set up. All we would do now is use a parent constraint to make the controls drive the joints. Let's move this back under the main root control. So now the joints follow with the root control. And we can use the controls to pose them. So this is how rigs are traditionally built. And these work in versions of Maya before 2020. The problem is, if we need to have an offset group on top of each control, the rig starts to get bloated. You can see it in this example. Also, having these offset groups does open up the possibility that the animator will accidentally animate one of those rather than the controls, which can cause lots of problems in your pipeline. But to be fair, what you should do when building the rig is make sure you lock off all these groups so they can't be animated. So let's have a look at the network in the node editor with the constraint node. So you see there are all these connections coming from the constraint node, so it's not the most economical way of working either. If we also wanted the joint to scale with the controls, we would need to use another constraint, which again would add more connections and slow the rig down. OK, so now we've looked at why we need offset groups, let's look at how we can eliminate the need for them. 
Here we have the controls again with all the transform values. All we need to do is go to the attribute editor. And down here we have the transform offset parent matrix section. What we need to do first is copy all the transform values from here down to here. Now you'll notice that the control has moved now, but that's because we now have a double transform because it's using the offset parent matrix values plus the original transforms. So all we need to do is zero out the main transforms. And the control moves back. See, that's nice and easy. And we now have a control which is orientated correctly and has nice clean values. We can do the same with the rest of the controls now. Okay, so the controls are all nice and clean. Again, just moving those values down to the transform offset parent matrix section. So with that done, let's now use the offset parent matrix attribute to make the controls drive the joints instead of using constraints. Let's jump over to the node editor and bring in the control and the root joint. Open these up. All we need to do is connect world matrix zero to the offset parent matrix attribute. There we go. You will see that the joint has moved just like the control did before. So what we need to do is remove that double transform. Let's zero out the joint's transform values. So that's pulled it back, but it's still not orientated correctly, even though the rotate values are set to zero. Because this is a joint, we also need to reset the joint orient attributes too. And that's now back in position. We can now use the control to move and rotate the joint. So that was a simple solution and it used a single connection rather than the network which comes with a constraint. Let's look at the next joint now and we need to work a little differently from here on because we also have to factor in the hierarchy. Let's clear this and bring in the next control and joint. Let's do the same as we did before. So connect world matrix zero to offset parent matrix. The joint has moved again, so let's reset the transforms. Even though we removed the double transform, the joint is still in the wrong position. This is because the world matrix attribute doesn't just take into account the control, but it also takes into account all of the parents values too. So what we need to do now is take those away. You see, we can still rotate the control and the joint follows, but we have this offset which is breaking things. So what we need to do is use the previous joint in the hierarchy and take away its parent matrix values. Jump back into the node editor and bring in the root joint, which is the parent of the tail one joint. Let's adjust these. We need a new node now, so press tab and create a MULT matrix node. This will allow us to combine the matrix values from a number of nodes. We first need to add two items, one for the control and another for the root joint. Connect world matrix zero from the control to the matrix in zero attribute. And now connect the parent inverse matrix attribute the inverse attributes are the reverse of the main matrix values. So this will essentially take those values away to matrix in one. Now all we need to do is connect matrix sum to the main joints offset parent matrix attribute. The joint has now snapped back into position and we can use the control to rotate it and move it. It also follows as the parent control is manipulated too. So the tail one joint is now using the matrix values from the control, but also being told to ignore its parent's values. Let's rename this. 
OK, let's do the next joint in the chain. So bring the control and the joint into the node editor. Just move these and open them. We need another Mult Matrix node, so just duplicate the first and rename it. So connect the World Matrix 0 attribute from the control to Matrix in 0. So this is telling the joint to follow the control. Now we need the joint which is above this one in the hierarchy, so that would be tail 1. Connect its parent inverse matrix attribute to matrix in 1. This tells the joint to ignore the parent values. And finally, connect matrix sum to tail 2's offset parent matrix attribute. The joint has moved this time, but we haven't cleared its transforms, so we just need to zero these out. And also remember to reset the joint's orient values too. OK, I'm just going to speed things up as we connect the rest of the controls. OK, so those are all set up. and we can animate the joints with them. So we managed to set this up without any constraints or offset groups, which is great for our rigs. It's important to also check the root control too. So there's one more step. If this were a real rig that we were going to pass to a client, we would need to put everything into a group, just to keep the scene nice and tidy. Something like this. The problem is if we move it, you see the root joint moves away from the control. So basically, this joint now has a parent in the hierarchy, so we need to factor that in. So let's go back to the node editor. We need the group and the first FK control. And we're going to use another Mult Matrix node. So let's copy this one. Just as before, connect world matrix 0 from the control to matrix in 0. Now because the group has no parents, we instead use the world inverse matrix 0 attribute. So connect that to matrix in 1. Finally, connect matrix sum to the root joints offset parent matrix attribute. The joints now move back into position. And we can move the group. And everything stays in place. So you see how you need to think of things a little differently when working with a hierarchy and these matrix values and nodes. Now even though we have these matrix attributes and nodes, constraints will still be a key part of your rig, especially if it's for a game. Let me just quickly demonstrate. So here we have two joint chains. The green one on the left is using parent constraints to drive the joints, so like the setup that we originally saw at the beginning of the video, whereas the one on the right is using the more economical offset parent matrix setup. I've added some basic animation to these, so they just curl up. Let's select the joints and the hierarchy and then simply bake the animation onto the joints. We can just use the default values. OK, that's done. And we can see the keys in the time slider. If I scrub through, everything seems fine, but remember that the joints are still being driven by the controls. So let's just delete them. OK, so the constrained tail is still in place, but the matrix-based tail has moved and shrunk. If we play the animation, 
the constrained tail has retained it, but the matrix tail has lost it. This is because when baking, Maya uses the main transform values. With the matrix connected joints, the main transforms were all zeroed out. So the animation has been baked, but baked at zero. You can see this if we look in the graph editor. You see, we have the Z rotations animation here. Whereas the matrix joints is flat. So for the time being, if working on a game rig, feel free to use the offset parent matrix attributes with the controls and other systems, but when it comes to driving the main skin skeleton, stick with constraints. Okay, another video over. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching right to the end, and remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments below, or alternatively, why not join the AntCGI community Discord group, where me or other members of the community will be more than happy to help. Remember to help support future content and keep these videos free, please visit the AntCGI store or join the AntCGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.